So she's going to be talking about those things. And um, she also knows about all the other programs at Clarkson that they offer. And so she can give you a little bit of insight, not only what you need to do in high school to go to their college, but um, some of the other schools, kind of what they're looking for too. And this is um, Ken Zeiger, and then um, he's in the admissions office there. And then these two ladies are actually at school at Clarkson right now. So if you want to know anything about the school or their program or what it's like to actually be going to college and um, working and those types of things, um, then they can give you some information about that. Okay, so ask questions as they're going if you have some. Okay. I'll get started. How many of you guys have heard of Clarkson College before? A couple. We're in this class in the first one. That's good. Well, for those of you who aren't familiar with Clarkson College, we are a private healthcare college in Omaha. We're actually an educational partner with the Nebraska Medical Center, so we're right on the corner of 42nd and Dodge, just a couple blocks down the street from the Med Center. So for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with us, you have probably driven down Dodge and driven right past us and maybe never noticed it. Or if you've ever been to the Med Center, you probably have driven by our campus, or maybe you've even had someone you know who was in like Clarkson Tower, which is one of the facilities at the Nebraska Medical Center that's kind of named after our school's namesake. And so, um, as far as Clarkson College goes, we offer four undergraduate programs, and we gave you guys each a booklet that kind of has a little of the general information in there, but we offer nursing for undergraduate programs, so the Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Um, we also offer um, a physical therapy assistant program. For those of you thinking physical therapy, you've never heard of physical therapy assistants, uh, one of the best ways to describe the difference between the jobs that both of those do are in that physical therapists will get to do hands-on work with patients depending on the facility, but primarily their job is to diagnose a patient. So they will visit with the patient, they'll diagnose them. Um, physical therapists then get to come in, or physical therapist assistants get to come in then and do all the fun hands-on work. Um, so they're the only actual licensed healthcare professional that can work alone with the patients doing different rehabilitations with them um, without having to be a physical therapist. And so it's a little less time in school, less money then, um, so it's kind of a great opportunity for students who are interested in physical therapy that maybe don't want to be in school for six years. And then we offer a radiologic technology and medical imaging program. So that's going to be like x-rays, CT scans, MRIs, bone densitometry, angiography, mammography. You can either just get a two-year associate's degree in standard x-rays, or you can add on one more year to get a bachelor's degree in medical imaging, where you'd specialize in one of those specific internal body images. Um, Clarkson College also offers two online degree programs for healthcare business and healthcare services, and that's kind of the behind the scenes work. So if you like the idea of working in healthcare, but you don't like the idea of working with gross sick people and patients <laughs> and any of the yucky stuff, then maybe healthcare business or healthcare services might be for you. Um, it incorporates aspects of management, public health, billing and coding, handling records, data, um, all of your hospital and billing information. So there's quite a few avenues within healthcare that you can do. And we're kind of here to talk with you primarily today about CNA and how that's um, kind of your gateway to start working in healthcare and getting that experience, especially for students who want to go into nursing. But I know the one thing that we'll definitely kind of touch on a couple times throughout the day is that um, you know, there's lots of ways to get started in healthcare and there's lots of different avenues for healthcare, so there's no really right or wrong way to get started there. Um, I will have the students go ahead and introduce themselves, tell you who they are, um, maybe where they're from, and then what program they're in and why they came to Clarkson College, um, and then we'll go ahead and get started on the fun stuff. Okay, I'm Alicia Coleman. I'm originally from Grand Island, Nebraska. I'm in the Physical Therapy Assistant Program, and I chose Clarkson just because when I went on the visit there, it seemed like a great fit for me. I really like the program. I like how it's set up in the two years, and I could get in there, learn everything, and get it done, and I love all the teachers that were there as well. And I'm Ashley. I'm also originally from Grand Island, and I'm in the BSN, or the Bachelor's of Science in Nursing course, and I just love it at Clarkson because um, the course itself, like some of the examples, my first year I was used different than other nursing programs elsewhere, so it's really cool. <laughs> As Mrs. Krieger said, my name's Judy Dunn. I'm the Director of Professional Development at Clarkson College. I oversee all the non-credit courses that are available for individuals that want to get some kinds of training or additional training, but don't necessarily have to or want to apply to the college for a long-term 
associates or a, or a bachelor's degree or even beyond that because the college does offer a number of advanced degrees as well. One of the biggest areas that I oversee is the nurse aid classes as well as then also the medication aid classes. And if you're familiar at all with any kind of, um, maybe you've been in the hospital or you've got a, an elderly family member that might be living in a long-term care facility or something to that effect, nurse aides are those individuals, both female and male, that work with patients in that kind of a setting for the really basic everyday kinds of needs. They help with giving them a bath, help them brush their teeth, comb their hair, help them get in and get out of bed, help them get to the bathroom. Um, in some instances, if the person is impaired, they may actually feed them. They also do a lot of um, everyday kinds of facility, help them get dressed, help them get down to the, you know, the breakfast room to meet and eat with other patients and those kinds of things. They're a real, it is considered a real entry level healthcare position, but it's a very rewarding position, especially if you like to be with people and you like to talk to people and, and really be able to very, be helpful because it is a very necessary position. If you think about all the things that happen in any kind of healthcare facility, during the course of a day, um, the nursing staff, for instance, can't take care of every single thing a person needs. They have to have some other people helping them. And so that's one of, a lot of what the nursing assistants do. Um, it is very hands-on. You actually are touching people. You're dealing with all kinds of fun stuff like vomit and urine and that kind of thing because this is, this is real life. These are real people that need help. But you, have, you can find jobs in a lot of different kinds of facilities, not necessarily just long-term care. Nurse aides are utilized in some group homes, in daycare situations, in some schools. They're used in um, hospitals, and they may be called something different, like at the Nebraska Medical Center. They're called patient care techs. It's, uh, they have a little more responsibility than a nurse aide might if they were working in a, in a nursing home or some kind of long-term care facility. But they're very vital positions. The course that we offer is a very short, intense course. It's only actually nine days of classroom time or about 14 evenings because we offer it both in the daytime and at night in case people have got a job or they're going to school like you folks are. Um, it allows for some flexibility in that regards, but it's, you, you learn a lot in a very short period of time. There's classroom work where you're actually do lectures and a lot of hands-on work. In the nurse aid classroom at Clarkson, we have eight hospital beds and we have full-size mannequins and you actually learn all the skills that you need to be able to move right on into the job. So you're helping, you know, working with other students to learn how to take vital signs, to do blood pressures, temperatures, rep, pulse and respirations, those kind of things, and how to move people in bed, how to do range of motion exercises, how to help people get in and get out of bed, you name it. So you practice those kind of skills in the classroom setting, and then at the end of the class, there's three days of clinical that you actually are working in a facility there's a group of 10 students that go with an instructor and you're actually providing the patient care in the facility. Three days doesn't seem like much, but it really gives you a good idea of what happens in a healthcare environment and all the different kinds of jobs that are there as well. Maybe you're just taking a nurse aid class because you wanna get your feet wet and learn those basic skills that everybody needs to know. But yet in that kind of a situation, you'll be able to see what the physical therapists are doing and what occupational therapists are doing, what the dietetics people in the, those are all involved in taking care of those clients. The nurse aid classes for the most part are geared toward helping the elderly, but there's a lot of um, availability in other kinds of institutions. You can work with kids if you wanna work with kids. Um, there's you know other kinds of places you can, you can find those kind of jobs. In the, Metropolitan Omaha area, um, as the speaker was asking earlier, that nurse aides make probably on the average of 11 to 12 dollars an hour. Um, it's a very flexible job. A lot of people go to school, they're in college, and they're still working in those kinds of jobs because it gives you really good experience. Um, and in our instance, a lot of our students get hired by the Nebraska Medical Center to work there, and then once they're finished with their nursing degree, they've already got their foot in the door, they've been there, the staff knows them, and it's not necessarily easier, but it is a, a good, uh, you know, advantage to trying to get a job there as, an, as a nurse as well. The second class that I offer that's kind of an, an advancement after the nurse aid is a medication aid. They just let them in the morning and they, they have wonderful dining rooms that they can go eat at and stuff. But sometimes they just may not have the best memory. Maybe they can't remember if they took their medications that morning or not. They can't remember, was I supposed to take two blue pills or one pink pill? 
that kind of thing. And so medication aides work in those facilities to actually dispense an individual's medication. And they're there to be able to check on people. Um, they're there if they need to, you know, check their blood pressure because they're not, they, maybe the person was feeling faint and they want to just know what's going on. So they're there to kind of make sure they're, you know, overseeing what's happening, but they're not, the patients, they're not really patients, they're just residents, they call them, because they live there, but they're not necessarily really, really sick. The medication aid class is another short, very short class. It's very intense. You learn a lot about medications, pharmacology, how to administer medications. And for the most part, the medications that medication aids administer are pretty everyday kinds of medic. They don't get into specialty drugs and things like that. But yet you still have to have a really good knowledge of what is the expected effect of that medication, what's a side effect, what do you need to look for if somebody's getting sicker because of the medication and stuff like that too. Here in Omaha, there is a huge demand for medication aids. Um, there is a lot of new assisted living facilities that are being built. We had four built this year. We've got three that are under construction right now that I know of, and there's probably more. Uh, they just announced one today in today's paper, so actually there's four. Um, so there's a big demand for people for those jobs to the point that I have at least two recruiters, two different recruiters from different companies that come to each one of our medication aid classes to talk to the students about the jobs that they have available. And they've hired people even before the class is finished. So um, it's a, a great opportunity, especially if you're thinking of trying to work while you're going to college and you wanna stay in healthcare and get some, back, you know, get some uh, experience. And in some instances, I always tell people that the medication aid jobs can be great because there's a lot of downtime in that kind of a position. It's not real demanding in terms of you're not running all the time. So people, the couple people I know at one facility are nursing students and they like it because they get time to study during while they're working. And so that's a, always a plus if you, if you need it. Um, but it's the classes that we offer, like I said, are real entry level. Um, to be a nurse aide in Nebraska, you have to be 16 years of age. And to be a medication aid, you have to be 18. Um, there's not a lot of other requirements. We don't have, uh, you know, GPAs or anything that's necessary to, to get into the classes, but it is intense. And so you're expected to learn quickly and to be really able to stay on top of the anatomy and physiology and all those kinds of things that you're learning. In my particular program, I require people to have an 80% or better to pass. Um, I really feel you, once you're done with the class, you really need to know what you're doing. And I don't really feel comfortable with people passing at a 70% rate because that's kind of, that's still wishy-washy in terms of, would you really know how to recognize if somebody was becoming more ill or something to that effect? Once you've completed the nurse aid class, there is a state examination that you have to take, both a written exam and a skills exam where you actually have to demonstrate the skills you learned in class um, for an instructor and get checked off to make sure that you adequately know what you're doing. And that puts you on what's called the Nebraska Nurse Aid Registry. Here in Nebraska, you don't really get licensed like a, a registered nurse or a physical therapist can actually get licensed. But the registry is a good way for employers to know if you completed an approved course and that you've passed it that course and that you're eligible to get hired because you've learned what is required in that particular job. There's a similar kind of registry for the medication aid. There's an exam, that, a written exam that you have to take for that class, as well as um, for those positions, one of the things to consider is the fact that healthcare is pretty strict about what a person's background is like. And you do have to sign off on back, you know, get a background check done and in many instances, if you have any kind of felony or certain some misdemeanor on your record and stuff, it's not going to bode well for you to really be in healthcare because in many instances that you're not eligible for hire. And in some of the job positions, like in nursing, you're not even eligible to take the board exams to become a registered nurse. So it's something to consider um, now when you, that, you know, those are the kinds of things that can be detrimental to your future career if you're trying to move on into healthcare and stuff. Do you have any questions overall about any of the stuff we've been talking about? We've got lots of, lots of stuff we're throwing out there. Yes? What kind of prices did this go up? Pardon? What kind of prices did this go up? Prices? It, it, because it's a, pr 
private college, we are, our tuition, the credit tuition is probably a little higher than some institutions, but in technically in Nebraska, um, the only private college that's more expensive than us is Bellevue. And so it really varies. I don't know, what is the current credit hour? 146 a credit hour for tuition. Are you talking about um, for courses with credit, or are you talking about like to be a student or a nurse aide for courses? Okay. Yeah, the nurse aide class is $495, and that includes the textbook and all of those state examinations I mentioned. The only thing a student has to provide is that for the clinical, you do have to have navy blue scrubs, which we're fine with. You can borrow them or you know buy them yourself if you want to. We offer um, some discounted pricing on that. And then the medication aid class is $325. And there again, that covers the um, textbook. It doesn't cover the state examination because the state of Nebraska Department of Health administers that examination themselves. The college isn't, isn't able to do that. Um, but it's, you know, for that, and we do have financial aid available. There's not financial aid specifically for the nurse aid and the medication aid class, but I work with a lot of state agencies that provide funding to students in youth programs or adults that are looking to get a different job and say they oftentimes pay for those the, the nurse aid or the medication aid class fee outright. Um, you just have to go through their paperwork and their you know their particular process. But for the credit classes, we have a wide um, array of financial aid that's available, both everything from scholarships that are based on your grade point average from high school and your citizenship and your community involvement to um, you know federal and state programs as, as well. So the financial, we have a great financial aid office that's more than willing to work with students to make sure that you're adequately able to pay for the, the coursework as well. One of the other positives I think about the college is that we have a really um, extensive work study program and the federal government allows students to work at the college and they pay them, I think it's like 10 to 50 an hour right now. Um, for a 10 hours a week or so, and you get in your, with my, in, with our area, you're, you're an actual Nebraska Medical Center employee that, um, so I have three work studies that works in my department alone. They help with copying, putting materials together, setting up our classrooms. Um, we have some, we do a lot of uh, life support, uh, BLS and CPR kinds of classes. You gotta, those mannequins have to get cleaned and things like that, so they get paid an hourly wage, you know, to do that and still go to school as well. So that's really a big help for a lot of students that are trying to, you know, make ends meet while you're while you're in school as well. Any other questions? I've been in healthcare a long time, so if there's questions you have about some of the other programs that Kim was mentioning, we have a number of. Um, we're very specific to healthcare. We don't do. Well, you know anything out of the ordinary in that regards but we do have programs even from the nurse aid if you're say for instance not sure if you want to get into nursing and and do a four-year nursing program but you really think it's of interest to you we also offer a practical nursing program which is a, a part-time program for individuals that just want to get their LPN licensure um, and then we offer like Ken was mentioning a non uh, between the physical therapist assistant that radiography, the technology, which is the x-ray technicians. And then you can add on to that and we get more, much more specific and do mammographies and um, all kinds of uh, advanced medical imaging. And the healthcare business is that area that is, for those folks that maybe don't really like to deal with patients, but realize that to do healthcare, there's gotta be a business side of it. You, somebody has to be administering it, has to be doing it, the human resources aspect has to be taking care of the coding and the billing and stuff like that. And healthcare is pretty specific. It's not like running a business if you were a manufacturer or something like that. So our healthcare business programs start from a certificate and go all the way up through a master's program to be able to help people run the business side of healthcare. Most or all of those programs are online, so you don't have to physically come to campus which makes it really nice for folks that are already working someplace in another job and they, you know, they just want to be able to access their classes and stuff at night or on weekends and stuff like that. That's a, we have a really robust yeah. online. When you think about it, most of the time, say you're walking with somebody 
and they're an elderly person and they really get shaky and start to fail, what do you usually do? You grab their shirt or their jacket and you know they could fall on the floor and you're standing there with a, a sweatshirt in your hand and, the, and they can injure themselves a great deal. Where gate belts are utilized is the fact that it gives the person that's the caregiver and helping that individual, it gives them something really solid to grab onto. It may seem really simplistic, but it really works really well. Can you guys give any incidences of when you've used them? Um, for the nursing area of this, um, we use it to get a patient out of bed. If they have to use the restroom or have to get into a wheelchair, and then we mobilize them. So it just really helps to make sure that there's no risk of falls, which is really big. Yeah, and in physical therapy, it's the same thing. Um, mobilizing, if you're working out in the gym with the patient or doing any activities, you want to make sure you have this on so they don't fall and then have another health crisis what we thought if you guys want to pair up and at one person put it on and see what it feels like and the other person walk the person around with it and just get kind of get a flair of the fact that it's it's an essential tool that we use all the time